When is it? Is it August? 5th of August. Maybe it shouldn't be too bad, eh? So it's Saturday night, Johnny. It's almost says too bad you can't take a day off, hey? That's right. I suppose you've got to release the lineup. Um, that's part of this video. Do you, do you need to see what's in it? I'll get you the page. You've got to show me. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm not I'm interested. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, boys. Pretty oh, cool. Right. Just what you see, you haven't got to beat. <laughs> I don't think that number plate made for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> factors into considering what it is that's deciding your class. So obviously how many cylinders you've got, how many litres is your engine, how many horsepower came out of the factory, the potential for it to be screwed out, the potential for a turbo to be fitted, general overall weight of the tractor, power to weight ratio, a whole lot of factors and we've put you in your class. Now in the interest of safety, if you want to be in a different class you're going to have to go up a class. And that could happen to you on the day that we discover you've got a lot more horsepower than we're expecting and you might get bumped up. We're going to name who's in the first class. So we've got a 956XL case. We've got a Ford 76 coming from England. We've got four John Deere's. We've also got two Sammy's in that class. One of them is a laser 100, five cylinder, no turbo. And the other is a legendary, famous, mighty 90, four cylinder Sammy. Dungy 262 is competing in class one. So he is the man to beat. There we go, 228s, 476, 3075, 61 and 6310, 956XL, 7740, there's your laser, and a T560, 5060. Hey, should be tight enough. Tight enough, and we get the all key out. Oh, the nice sweat here, boys, nice sweat here. That's new to the best bunk track we here in the yard. I'd hang out, hang down to 1400, I'd hang her down there for already, and think about changing down a year. With 1,500 pound of foot torque, dude. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shows Dino there. Stuck her on just to see, you know, it's 94, five horse or something. Yes. She's just putting it. So, she's never been touched. I was, well, I wasn't really surprised because she's a wicked pony thing for all that, as you know. Aye. Aye, she rides. She's a 16 ton dump to her on her 14 ton red rock sides to her and everything. Well, what weight do you think I should put on this class? You'll you'll, you'll be in class one, like. Oh, 12 ton, hey. You go to 12 ton, would you? Oh, why? Fair on her. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey you're the 20 hey, ton dump. So we want you to look up this track now in about a minute, like. We don't want to wait half a week. Sure, go on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I might start watching that day. I wish I had the 90 here. Right? <laughs> I wish I had the 90 here. I should have brought the 90. I say that's for some crack. You're telling me you were at the original oh, Mark right. 1 prototype on the pole? Yep, you oh, were right. there. Oh, right. I was there, Stan. Describe to me your favourite moment. Big hail stains. <laughs> I made big hail stains that day. No. Part of the heat clean, have you? That's the way I think that on the pole should be. That was good crack. You know, uh, coping the tiller was the best bit, but... Are you coming to cope one this Oh, aye. It's not as they break my hitch. Uh, <laughs> no, we went uh, The folks would go and see it for it's totally something different. <coughs> it's not like tractor pole. That's... Totally different. Three times as many tractors this time with a hundred tractors like. A hundred, hey. And I had to put that, that's all I can deal with. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was afraid uh, it would take 12 hours uh, <laughs> to uh, get through them all. Has it got to be known, same field? Same field. Dun, dun, then uh, up and, uh, and we're going to change the barrels a wee bit. It's a wee bit complicated, maybe the three barrels just go for a figure eight this time uh, maybe. Uh, I think I get loose on her. I need the left and right mixed up, do you? I need the uh, GPS uh, gun. Well, you see, that, that's, that's when he was staying there. He was staying there. He was staying the box, and as I said, they had to put an iron and an L in his hands. But then he was loose for he put the boxing gloves on, he'd I see him. <laughs> yes. yes. A waste of time, so. What were you doing the box with the glasses? Did you contact on her? Oh, no, just hot the boy in the middle. Just aim yeah. for the blur. Just... Aye. <laughs> bit, bit, I'm not enjoying. I see now to the glasses off. I am. Um, See the mighty nice, I couldn't read that to you, Harry. I'm bland, hey. But that's why the referee wore a white shirt, so he wanted to get hot with him. I've done all right, I've managed to see. I just kept hitting the boy in the middle as best I could, and that was that. So, what way is it working? What way, what, what, what way will we be pulling? As I say, I can, I can, I can sell her whatever you want for your class. <laughs> but you didn't know yet. The tiller is five ton empty, like. So, was it? Uh huh. That's. 
Good strong tiller. What make a tiller is it this? Red rock. Right. Flat tillers are they? Flat tillers, which then we can put on whatever concrete blocks we need, so we can throw on 1.6 tons every block. Ah. Like 1.6 ton. Two blocks with plenty of you boys. Because they're they, with men that haven't got 95 horses, we've got men that maybe only have 85 or 75 horses. Yes, you, uh, you see, you hit it. I'll be same weight, I'll that class. Uh -huh. What's it got up to? What's the class? Uh, you're, horse you're 100 horses, roughly, what I'm cutting her off at there. So you have a sporting chance now. For up to 100. But, but Big laser might take it. I you say she she is she straight heavy. five cylinder. Straight five cylinder, eh? She's turbo dive be fair. Hey but hey, Jimmy, tell you my things to you. I work with McCain's hey, my things can slug on, you know. I might might be tight. <laughs> might be tight, but hey, at the end of the day, sure. Everybody's a few wee deers up against you there, six one and a couple of twenty eight fifties and is there a six? I wanna be feared of twenty eight fifty. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we are giving a hundred percent no fees, no charges, nothing. 100% of the competitor money is going to the Air Ambulance NI. Can't put in words how valuable a resource that is. You know, charity is always good at the best times, but this is an actual practical tool that the farming community wants and needs for that emergency. For that day that you never want to have them, you do want to have these guys in standby for when you need them. We went to meet the guys and hear what it's like firsthand from a doctor and firsthand from the people that are behind the fundraising for the charity and their words are better than mine. So John, come on down and I'll show you the back of the helicopter RR ambulance. This is where I would sit with my helmet on here and in the front you'll see... So how many crews involved? Three. Three. So we have our pilot and our paramedic who's also a technical crew member so they will assist with um, all the meteorology and navigation get us safely to where we need to go. But we work as a team of three so perhaps when we're coming into uh, a farm or a uh, a non sort of commercial air airport or, or landing site, then we'll all have to have eyes out from the back. So I face backwards okay. and I'd be looking out yes. the back. So it's all about keeping us safe and our patients safe. People are always surprised at how small this actually is, but we carry all the equipment here that you would receive if you had serious illness or serious injury in a hospital. So these are all critical care equipment and critical care interventions. So you can see up on the top here, this is a ventilator. So this is if you um, have severe injuries that we have to give you a pre-hospital anaesthetic and put you to sleep to protect your life, um, save your life and protect your brain. So we have put you on the, the machine to breathe for you, yeah. take over that for you. At the back here we have our um, defibrillator. So if you have any heart conditions that you um, your heart has stopped or is in a, an abnormal rhythm, we can deliver the shocks to restart your heart and to get your heart back into a normal rhythm. So we actually carry the blood to the patient. So if, if you have a severe injury and you're losing blood quickly, um, we can actually start the blood transfusion there at, at the scene, at the point of injury, and then transport you. Is there a use by date on that? Yes, there is. And we're very um, reliant and very thankful to the blood transfusion service of Northern Ireland and to all the people who donate their blood so regularly. Um, to help us and to save lives so it's, it's part of a bigger team so yes, yes. they're checked every day um, by the blood and transfusion services so here this is the lucas device okay this is where if you've had uh if your heart has stopped beating your cpr so this is called mechanical cpr so this is a machine that can actually do Beautiful chest compressions pressure. for you awesome. to keep you uh, keep your heart going while we, we do equipment this is um some more advanced equipment and you'll see here from a performing perspective as well we have a shovel because <laughs> sometimes we need to get bolt cutters yes as you can see because <laughs> sometimes when we land in fields and farms we don't realize that the gates just turn off so we'll have yes. to cut ourselves out well, how many minutes from from a call comes in to you're in the air we try to do it within one minute so it's very tight time frames as you see we come in at sort of half six quarter to seven in the morning ready to go with all our kit checked and everything so our medical kit our navigation kit our IT yes. everything ready to go so we literally just come from our area base over there jump in the back and away we go but also as you saw some of our colleagues upstairs we have mandatory training every single day so we will drill and skill repetitively for all those sort of high impact procedures so no matter whether it's your birthday christmas day doesn't matter we'll be doing training every day was well, that um, pure medical training or is that scenario training or scenario training so yes we will use cases that perhaps we've been to before and use them as, as a basis to put our scenario on say a fall from height or somebody who's been unfortunately crushed by a large animal 
and use that as a basis to then say, oh, actually we need to do some chest interventions or this person is so badly head injured that we need to give them an anaesthetic and breathe for them or they've had their limbs crushed in, in some part of farming machinery to stop the bleeding to death, resuscitate them, give them blood to pain relief and package them. So, so it's a range of technical skills, medical skills, obviously then the offloading and unloading from the helicopter, the aviation skills, and um, we have to do mandatory training for our to keep us safe in the helicopter and uh, stuff like that as well. So it's, it's not just as simple as taking a paramedic or a doctor or a pilot from their day jobs and plonking them in here. We, we're a highly skilled team and that comes from the beauty of working from some fantastic people. <laughs> I don't know how you work in such a close, <laughs> tight proximity. There's only you know, way. It's just, I know, but yeah. even, you know. The patient's head is, is yeah, there, there and feet down there. So um, we put, if the patient is anaesthetised um, or, or even if not, we have um, headphones we put yes. on them as well yes. to protect them from the noise. Yes. So our um, helmets, so we can we have three way communication yes. with the front. And then also we can communicate, we have a, a pedal where we can actually communicate um, our, our paramedic colleagues up the front to ambulance control and we also have a marine radio and our pilots can speak to air traffic control and other emergency yes. services as well. So actually being able to fly overhead and see what's going on gives you the me mental model of actually you can sort of anticipate what you need to do and be that extra few seconds ready. But yes, it is nice flying around. <laughs> looking at our beautiful countryside over Northern Ireland <laughs> as well, so I do enjoy it. I don't have a fear of flying, yeah. I just have a, a, it must be an attraction yeah. to severe turbulence, because <laughs> every time I get on a flight, yeah. it, 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 it is good. Actually, really? John, when me and John yeah. actually first started uh, flying about and, and doing yeah. videos, went to America and stuff, I said to John, I'm going to warn you, <laughs> every flight that I'm on, there's, are you severe, the are you? Yes, there's severe turbulence. <laughs> Even though sometimes the weather conditions can be bad and the flying can be a little bit bumpy, I feel 100% safe in the back with knowing that my crewmates up the front are, are doing the hard lifting. So it's it's all good. Awesome. <laughs> Just explaining about our turbulence. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know. want him flying. No. Yeah. You don't want him flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You dropped so. like a stone. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. You're not allowed to say things like that yeah. whenever you're actually on a shift, not even joking about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> nobody's nobody's going to <laughs> yeah, if you're in the scud, you can leave now, you know? Uh. <laughs> Class 2 now, this is probably the, the biggest number of tractors we've had entered. Roughly speaking, it's ballpark 100 to 150 horse. Some guys maybe will have tuned them up, we're allowing for that, but here goes the list. We've got four cases. At the low end, we've got a couple of four cylinders. We've got a 110, an MX120, we've got a 1255, and we've got a 5130, that's our four cases. We've got a Dutz Agri Prima, 130 horse. On top of that, we've got a rake of Ford I don't even know how many. We've got two 7810s. I think there's maybe a third one actually, a Silver Jubilee, a third 7810. Tell me about your, your mate's Silver Jubilie. She's turbo. I think she's around 130 or something. Jabra, she has a wick out. I do stain stuff where she's wick out. You do what where? Three stains, right? What? Great big dirty loads of stains, man! <laughs> oh, you big loads of stains? Oh, I do. Big loads of stains. <laughs> <laughs> Just stirring the pot, hey. There are a couple of 7 8 there. There is. There's three of them, that's right. But that's if everybody shows up, like. But they've, they've all paid their deposit money, yeah, that's so that's going to charity regardless. That's it, 83, probably 83.40s there, 1680, 618. Is that uh, Macaulay's F140? It'll be hard to go by. We've got four Fiat Winner Series. That's an F-115, two 130s, and another F-140. Now, that F-140 is our legendary winner, Paul McCauley, who smoked the 1455 in style. He is returning to compete for the trophy in Class 2. He is obviously the man to beat in Class 2. 155-54 Renault, and that top line of that class line. Should be a wicked outsider. A couple of 145 uh, setters. 14145 oh, zetters. Oh, pity. See, he's there, boy. He's there. Oh. He'll be, be singing now if he's, he's taking them boys on. Any Muir Hulls on? No Muir Hulls this year, no. The Cook Cooks is bringing a 9.6 and a 9.7 Ford. So they, they've been in a class two as well. On the pole again, 2023. How are you feeling? Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Feeling confident? Yeah. Nervous. Nervous? <laughs> what have you to be nervous about? The crowds this time. <laughs> it's gearing up to be a big one, from what I can see. No. Scared of the old fella getting there in front of him. Ah, again? <laughs> again? It wouldn't be the first time, sure. 
<laughs> so what uh, all are you bringing this year? Ford 96 and the 97. 97 as well. What about Big Blue? Is she going to make an appearance? She's going back. Um, still as bold as the last time, but uh, hopefully it's dry. So uh, a bit of different colour this year. Yes. These things was the, the king in their day. Okay. Give them a run and see how the two wheel drive goes because you're not actually wasting power on four wheel drive or anything like that. And what sort of horsepower are these two compared to each other? Are they a similar sort of horse or? This one rated was 145 and that one was 152 or 155, but basically the same engine tweaked a wee bit. There's, there's no practice run. Well, I would count one of them as a practice run. <laughs> yeah, I would, I mean, that's one of your runs. Aye, aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no pick up the field, see how No, 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 but sure. I'm only your calibre, you'll not need a practice run. <laughs> it's this here. <laughs> Cooks are coming back. Big Blue will be returning. She's in the top class, she's not in this class. But Ken and Alistair, father and son, will be competing in a Ford 96 and a 97. Two wheel drive, father and son head to head again. It'll be something to watch. We've got Two eight two tens, both of them turboed, both of them well turned up. One of them's Mr. McGrath, who is returning once again. Uh, that's the other thing, guys. No passengers this year. That is the change with safety again. There will be no passengers, so unfortunately, Jody won't be sat beside his father in the eight two ten. Uh, moving on, there's a th actually a thirty at two ten in there. We've got an eighty two forty. We've got an eighty three forty. We've got two eighty three sixties. So. When John said two 8360s, what John actually meant was one 8360 and one 8630, which is owned by John and Neil. That's out of Spain. You know, I always want one of them. And the boy kept an eye out for me and got me that one there. I put them tires on it. Not that they're up too much, but they look better. The dual power would be hard to come by, like. Oh, it's very really odd. She's doing about 38k in the road. She flies in the road, you know? Yes. She's calling it the uh, 15, TW15? Oh, yes, she is. That's all it is. Sorry. Black mud yards and the black grill. That's about it, eh? Yep. But just younger tractor. Well, are you looking forward to on the pole? Oh, I am. Um, a bit of crack in the whole sure. You fancy taking home a trophy, do you? Don't think I, I don't think I will now, but <laughs> sure, we can try anyway. What horse is that thing? I don't know. I'd say she's about 160. I don't know, like, but it just pulls like a train, like. Yes. But then the amount of things did, they don't go fast, you see, so it's hard to know, like. Moving on to the masses, we've got 3095, 6180, 6190, 6280, 6290, and we've got the man with the blown up engine. He's back, he's got a rebuilt, and he is returning to challenge Mr. Chambers if Mr. Chambers turns up. I have put the word out there that we'd like to see that rematch. Uh, whether it happens or not is entirely up to whether the 190 shows up. Moving on to the masses, we've got a McCormick MTX 135, we've got an 8340 New Holland, T6040. TM 120, the remainder of class two, two Reynolds, 110 14, and a 155. And please, Alan. Moving on to the John Deere's, we've got 6810. On top of that, we've got 6520, 6610, 6820. We've got a 3650 submitted by Ryan Connery. It'll be well tuned up, I think, that one. Why have we got a 3650 right? Well, from the childhood, growing up in 3040s and 3050s. Well, have you had to do anything here? Put a water pump in there and got the fuel pump done up in there and that was about it. Yes. Are you going to tell the world what she's doing with that or what? Ah, uh, 140. <laughs> <laughs> plus some. <laughs> 140 plus fat. <laughs> well, why did you say you're coming down the pole then? Sick of all these Massey and Ford men doing well, fate men bragging and stuff. Uh -huh. So. Do you want to see who you're against? Oh yeah. Well, you're coming to depress me, John. <laughs> Just looking at this, John, and wondering if you're going to give me a challenge. Really? And I lead 210. Hold on, throw me a page to see if I find something new worthy. <laughs> what about a returning champion, uh, the F140? You're fairly fat out, boss. In the same class. Alright. Huh? Perfect for the puddings and eating, as they say. I'm going to go with the 140. You beat the 140, you beat the 130. <laughs> 
there'll be a lot of competition between that F-130 and the 3650. Although the 3650 hasn't come out on top yet now, so it should be interesting. There's a 1455, I'd love to have a go at as well. Oh, well, he, he is an upper class. He's a class above you now. If you want to go on upper oh, class. I'd, tack, I'd tackle him, no bother. I know which one I would rather watch out of the pair, Ali. Yes, oh, oh, well, we all know that. We all know that. We're all John Deere men in this, in this room. <laughs> in terms of dividing classes, like, I've, I've given it my best shot. But, like, is it fair to put a, a lighter tractor that's turned up against a heavier tractor that's of the same horsepower? I see no problem with it, like. <laughs> In addition to that, we've got another Sammy Ditch Fire at 130 horse, I assume, because it's called a 130. Don't know anything about Sammy Ditch Fire. And we've got two more legends joining us in class two. For the last two, we've got two Zetters. We've got a 14145. I don't know how you pronounce Zetter numbers, but that's what we got. That's your class two. That's quite a lot of tractors. That one's going to be quite competitive. There's going to be some stuff I'm sure that's well turned up there. If you feel you're in a wrong class, well, you're welcome to go to class three, but you can't go down. At least it is proper, like, agri spec trophies. Like, there's a bit of weight in them. The hard getting back at all? Uh, some people were a bit precious. They didn't want to give them back. Oh, really? What as simple as this? You just have, name any name? We're not going to name any names, but you just have to win them again. Like, that's the thing, you know. <laughs> you can't just win once and, you know, go into retirement like somebody else I know did, Brian. Right, okay. <laughs> You'll have to come out of retirement for, uh, We'll see, we'll see. I'm not convinced. Brian. I'm not convinced. I have faith in you. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> I, I don't have faith in your tractor though, because I can't. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's us, that's us done. Blog over, blog over. Just here today, do a wee bit of promo for the event, raise a bit more awareness for air ambulance, and yeah, I'm going to set these down because these are getting heavy. See, Pamela just said, don't stress if the sticker's a wee bit off. John's OCD is not going to like it. Yeah, no. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm if, 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 it, if it was printed perfectly on, is that John's still going? There's a wee line out there. There's a wee line out. There's going to be barrels again. Well, or not, the barrels is the same format as last time. It's a big surprise. <laughs> I like the format though. The format was good. It worked. It worked. I'm only saying I don't know what the format is because I haven't been in work for a week. I've been skiving. Yeah, because it doesn't fall back on each other. That's. A you grab your corner. Okay. Got her? Yeah. 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 Hey. Do you want to take over this, John? Because I don't want to be blamed. I like how they trust. We've got a lot of faith in the air ambulance here, so they do. What do you mean? Oh, yes. The old good old R series, like big R series. Yes. <laughs> no M's around here. <laughs> no New Holland's, no blues around here either, John. Kerry, how is the air ambulance funded? Yeah, so Air Ambulance is a complete charity, as you know, John, and each year we need to raise in excess of £2 million. A big, big figure, you know, but as we say, if everybody does a little bit, um, then that's manageable and sustainable. But as to how we're funded, we really, really rely on the community and the public um, organisations like yourselves doing fundraising. In the past six months you could be talking 800 events and you know they could be really small to much much larger events but whatever it is you know we love people getting involved and doing what they enjoy to help sustain the air ambulance. So what's your role within the, the crew here? Yeah so my, my role is uh, very much on the ground it's in relation to that fundraising and it's getting the message out so as I say we have a small team here and, and we work with the organisations like yours to, to raise those funds that are that are needed and we have a membership club as well that, that people can join too if they're interested in that with an adults club and we've also a club for kids as well um, which is great and each of our members are invited up to the airbase here every year okay. with a bit of a barbecue and um, that's all that's all good well, how big is the team here? I mean, how many people are involved? How many? So on the medical side, we have 15 doctors. So every day there'll be a doctor. So you, you met Dr. Sinead there today. So there's 15 because each of those doctors still has their, their duties in a hospital. So they're all consultants. They either work in A&E or anaesthetics because that's the two main skill sets needed at scene. So they do roughly a shift here at our ambulance every fortnight or so. Also up at the ambulance service control desk so that's where all 999 calls come in to Northern Ireland there is one of the air ambulance paramedics there right now today so they're looking at all of the 999 calls coming in and deciding which 
person in Northern Ireland is maybe the sickest or most critically ill that this medical team, this HEMS team, need to go to. So they're the person who will triage and decide if we go. That's got to be a tough job because you're trying to not have you guys run ragged. Absolutely. But be available for the person who needs it most. Yeah. So ensuring that you know the team go to the the right calls. You could get a day where everybody stays largely safe and this team aren't tasked out. That's quite rare. Um, on average twice but equally you get then other really busy days so busiest call outs we've had maybe six call outs per day where the team just bounce 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 once that paramedic at 999 center decides yep this is one for the team they'll radio through hems call hems call they'll pick it up on the radios and where they're going to is plotted in through a, a, a system um, onto an ipad and can reach anywhere in around the furthest locations from here. You'd be talking about maybe Garva uh, and Fermanagh or up to Coleraine, probably take around 25 minutes. Okay. Other localities, much, much quicker. Um, how many pilots are on the team then? Yeah, so we have two pilots. So we met Rich, um, we have another pilot, Clive, and there are two full-time pilots. At the minute, we're working from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll soon change to, to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. just coming into those kind of the daylight hours now with the change in hours. Yeah. So so typically I mean obviously there's a massive variety of accidents you've been called to but but yeah. for the rural community how, how much of that is, is the world of agriculture? Probably accounts for roughly about 10 percent of the incidents and accidents that the medical team are called out to. We need to take deposits off our tractors for the chart. I thought we'll just take that money and we'll give it to our ambulance because it's it's an affirming event. We know agriculture is a big part of the workload here, and we want to support the cause. So on the day themselves uh, itself, um, what can people do if they see you, yourselves at the event? Is there a buckets going around? Can they give donations? As well as your the deposits, you know, we would hope we'll have volunteers in the day um, going around with those buckets, and it'll it'll all count. It all matter, you know, that donation. Small. Can you or take large. the the membership signups in the field? We can take we can take details for membership. Yeah. Absolutely, and people can sign up online there as well. You know, even between times, and um, just our website, our ambulance uh, ni .org. I think we're in the lane of fire here, Mark. We're going to move. No, we're not. He's going up that row. We're all right. <laughs> So, kicking off class three, we've got a Ditz 160. We've got a 1455XL. It's an international, it's not a case. It is the 1455 that was there last time. It has changed ownership. It is in the hands of Andrew Morton. He has done some work to the engine since she was there. So I assume she's doing more horsepower. Here with Andrew Morton, the turning driver from on the pole. Why are you coming back? For the crack. Support the charity is the only good thing to look. He's also here with a familiar tractor, but that wasn't the one you brought the last time. No, the 680 the last time, something a wee bit handier steered nearly. So they fetch mega money too, like, so it's kind of the reason being why she was cheap is because she's kind of rough, so aye. She's rough, but she goes, sir. <laughs> is the dream to um, eventually restore her back to something a bit fancier, or are you just happy with her in her working clothes? I come happy and I'm not. I see, well, to be fair, there's a some amount of work that's been done to her since November, like. Um, diesel lines all replaced, they're actually bigger. They went from, I think was it 8mm up to 12mm or 14mm or something. There's not a steel, there's not an original diesel line on that tractor or a steel diesel line. That's all the, the black holes. There's about 28 feet of diesel pipe on it. At this point I can say you're, you're most definitely the, the man that has been requested to be, people want to be up against this I thing. think I have a target on my back. Yeah, I don't know whether, whether if it was me yeah, or if it's a tractor or what it is. But there's definitely a target on your back. This page contains your class. How honest are them boys about their horsepower? Like, for I know I've been honest about mine, you know what I mean? This is where you need a dyno sitting at the gate just as they come in. Time you get everybody dyno, think how much time that would take just to leave it that the whole thing was level, levelled up and fair. You'll know, but as you said, you'll know by somebody getting up the track if you think that they're way oh, ahead of where yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, boy, back into that wee thing here a minute or two. That crystal would be cool, hey? That 16145, I think that would be mighty. You want to go up again, him? That would be good crack now. Who, who do you want to pick? Well, I've actually put all my tractors into reserve for no-shows because originally, originally we're tight for space with 100 tractors, so we've pulled me and all it as just a show pull. So we're, not, we're only doing the 16 against the TS for the crack. Mm -hmm. And then I've got my 7-8 in reserve, so if there's not an odd number in that, that fourth class. So because she's a heavier tractor, I put her up into the, into the fourth class. 
So uh, what, like I wouldn't say it's a fair match to put you against the 7-8-10 like. Ah, but here it's all for the spectator really like. Boys take a while serious this too though. So they do. At the end of the day it doesn't matter if you win or lose like you're 60 pounds still going to the air ambulance like that's kind of the main thing and boys forget that very handy like. I couldn't care. So I couldn't. That's what I love of these boys all said, oh sure it doesn't really matter it's all for charity but when it comes down to it hey. <laughs> You'll be as keen as anybody would. It depends who it's against, hey. That's why I wasn't wanting to go against Wee Owen or Ryan Connery or that, for they would give me dogs abuse. I'd never live that down, eh, if I could be at 3650, like, <laughs> never. <laughs> Two John Deere's, 6930 and 6920S. We've got a JCB. 3185. So you're saying this might not be the engine we're going to be looking at on the day? Maybe not. <laughs> Now, notoriously, JCBs are they're not famous for their field work, they're famous for their road work. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that'll give you an edge at all the pole? Yeah. Or a disadvantage? Yeah. The gears are very tall in her, so might as well might see how it goes. <laughs> What's your like on the lock? Probably similar to the Titanic. <laughs> okay, okay. Massey's 3655, 6480. That is all one young in the 6480. He is coming back. He is competing, and I'm sure he's still going to be trying to win a trophy, so he'll be going hard. Well, you're yeah. coming back then? I'm not sure, Harry. So, uh, well, Are you worried about it or are you looking forward to it? I would take a damn good look at the tillers, don't I? And what length? 26. 26 foot long? Mm -hmm. For all classes? All sex tillers is identical? Oh, uh, top. 100%. So we're because on a one class at a time this time? Le length will mean a, a lot too, you know, for... Turner Circle and uh, aye, no, like the same for he, But for healing over in my case. <laughs> <laughs> you spot the whole way at the front of the filler, like? Aye, well, I know that. That was a mistake too. I know that. that was my bad. I also rookie move that now. <laughs> We're going to simplify the barrels a wee bit for you. Good job. <laughs> Good man, John. I've told the market out to get a dry field someday. I'm going to peg it out and check it. But How are you going to do that? How are you going to simplify it? Just less. A glorified figure of eight. One last barrel. We'll get around one way or the other. <laughs> or over the top of it. <laughs> you're going to do a countdown for me, so you're going to do a three, two, and that. On two, I have my clutch out and no, 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 And then no, she'll go no, then. No. So, so. There'll be penalty points for jumping the gun, Gollum, <laughs> and penalty points. The, um, Big penalties for rolling trailers as well. <laughs> you roll it, you buy it. <laughs> well, look at that. <laughs> that was chatted about last time. We could do a crack, Gollum. It will. Sure, it was last time, Jer. It was, but this time we've <laughs> until three, they end up. This time we've three times as many tractors, and we've uh, we've thousand over a thousand tickets sold now as well. So we should have a bigger audience for your uh, your fast laps. Come visit the big thirty six ninety is representing the Massies at on the pole she is a weapon dino at 192 horse she's going to be a class three she's going to be a competitive two more masses a 7716 and 8130 new holland's in that category we've got t6175 t6180 t6180 t6080 we've got a tm150 and a T, two TM155s, TM165, and another Sammy Ditchfire 150, and one more legendary bus, another Zetter to round out Class 3, Zetter Crystal 16145, I think it is. I'm looking forward to seeing the Zetters, if I'm honest with you. I'd like to see some Zetters putting some egg on some face. <laughs> Don't you, Castle? I didn't plan to. You want one, do you? De de stress maybe, John. <laughs> <laughs> you want one of them tractor shit ones, do you? Punch bags. Does it matter so if it's blue or it had to be red? Could not care. So. <laughs> do not care. Class four. Now we're getting into the slightly more meaty things. This is whenever your sort of book horse bars are starting to take effect on top of potential for screwing and mapping and all them good things. Starting her out, we've got the class 800. Now that class was there the last time. You'll have seen it up against Big Blue whenever. The wee lad in beside him was like, Daddy, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> so, that's the class that's coming back. Uh, Desi Doherty, I think it is. We've got three fence. We've got 718. We've got 724. I think 724 is coming from England. 
And we've got an old school 818 Fent, the owner of which is none other than himself, the Grandmaster, Johnny Neal. Johnny's other tractor in that class is a John Deere 4755. When did you get the 47? About a year and a half ago, I think. I don't know how long ago it is. What notion did you take it that you wanted a 47? That was ours. Oh, was it? Aye, that was what ours. Was it that then? No, we bought that tractor, my brother did, in 97 for a 10X. And then they just headed in to get a new 7850 John Deere Harvester. And then I spotted her one day, so I bought her back. Uh huh. And that was it. LEDs in the front of her? Aye, LED there and there. Yes. I thought they looked well. And then if I put, didn't put them there, these here look stupid. You'll hardly, hardly take her to the grass. Oh God, I'll hardly do much with her now, but... <laughs> well, is that their standard or has she even turned standard up? Standard as far as I know, eh? 190, I think she's on the shaft. Yes. I suppose you could leave her more, like, but sure, she's that old now, and what I need the power for, like, you know. And then I have uh, an 818 Fent. I want to take to it. Yes. She'll do well now. What horse is she? She's 210. That's an animal. So it is. Proper power, like. It can go, and she's that old turbo clutch in her, you know, so you can take off in a good high gear with her. You know, just straight one eight, if you think she's the fat one, she'll she'll probably come out on top. She was running away, she's in that 200 mark, she, she should be up again a lot of yokes with the over 200, like. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that thing there going, Johnny. Aye, should go well, now. Wee soft spot for John Deere's, like. Oh, yeah, there's a serious baby now. I painted her now. You were good to her, hey? Oh, she needed it. Oh, she was a sight. Look at that there. <laughs> Look at that there. Jiggers, that's a sight, that time. Aye, it is. A lot of work on it. Yes. Should have painted the back end. I know. <laughs> I know. It is original, you know. It's a strong looking hitch, too. Like. That fella that I bought her off made that, like, it's well enough done. At the moment, she's heating up. Is what? Oh, she's heating up. That's not good. Sit there for about 15 minutes, heating up. I think it's a water pump. Honestly, don't know what it is. The thermostat was out of her when I got her. And I put a new thermostat in there when I was building her back up. And, uh, but I don't know if it's the gauge faulty. She's not actually steaming or- You can smell her. No, no, she, the tractor's running perfect. And even when you pull out the dipstick, you know, it's, it's not hot. The oil's not boiling hot or anything. Yes. But I, I hadn't time to look at it, but I will I'll get a look at it now. Now you've got a reason, Johnny. Mm -hmm. We've also got a Fiat 18090 in that class. Do you want this thing started? Aye, later up, sir. Fiat Agri for life. Purring like a wee mouse. <laughs> and then you have four automatic users, first, second, third, and fourth, uh -huh. without clutching her. Yes. That's why she's good at the tractor pull. Oh, she's a beast, hey. The only one good thing I'll say about that tractor, you don't need to take a lunch when you're going out of it and for she's that sort of diesel, you're back home. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're, hard, they're hard to come by now. Is there any other one of these in the company? There was one come up for sale and she was 36 grand, so she was a lovely tractor, but she wasn't a, the power shift. And see tractor pulling, they're no good, you just hang her. You know, whereas that day I can go back down the gears, uh, go up them and then come back down them. What's she like for a maneuver ball here in the barrels, what's the lock like on her? She's very good luck on her now. You probably need the wits on for this job of yours, I would say. I help with the steering. No, I, I love the fates, definitely. I wouldn't change that tractor for for anything. I don't think I would. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing her on the boat. Oh, the rabbit's beats up full on her and her flat out up the track. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll be a good day out, you know. Should be. Definitely. Should better. be pretty competitive. Like, I don't, hard to call who's going to win any given class. I would never uh, think I was going to win, like, but as, as I know I'm, she'll be competitive. Definitely will be competitive. We've got two 7810s, one of which is mine. Maybe let Brian drive that fast, don't know. We'll see. See if Brian gets the tractor guard up, or we'll put him in that. A 7920, a 6145R, another 6145R, 6175R, and you're probably thinking, why am I putting those up against each other? They're all over 200 horse. 
following up we've got Massey's, we've got a 6497, a 6499, a 7618, a 7620 and an 8250. 8250 is a bit of a, a rare beast there. We've got a T7200 New Holland, a Valtra T174, a Valtra T214. So if anything, Class 4 will be interesting because it's got most of the new gear in it and some of the old classics. Who knows if it'll be weight or power or a combination of pocket rocket or what or when that. We will see. Do you want a photo of me stand the front of this baby? Uh-huh. Uh, what's my hair like? <laughs> Finally, to round out our last five tractors, class five, we have a small number of beasts, but they are beasts. I think there's maybe only two or three of these in Ireland, I'm told. A Dutch X720. Never seen one. Looking forward to it. We've got Big Blue back in the 8970, but we've also got an 8970A coming in from England to go head to head with Big Blue. And we've got Mr. Connery's 8410 John Deere. Ah, it'll be me piping the 84 this time, John. So, well. so tell me about the 84. What's the connection to the 84? She's just, it's just an animal, that thing. Different league. I got Pomeroy and the and the wet on the Sunday. I passed the full pole mark at 20k in her, so <laughs> she, she can go. Very agile. She's very agile of herself for the size of her. I think a lot of people get put off because of the long bonnet. Yes. But they don't realise the John Deere cab sits that far to the back. Okay. She's no longer than anything else. Okay. And she's got a fierce lock on her. The only thing worries me is going up against the Vario tractors. Yes. They can get the speed that much quicker. Okay. But if that holds any length at all, <laughs> the Varios are <laughs> that's, just, that's just the long and the short of it. Like. You're not afraid of Big Blue then, no? Not in the slightest. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Alistair. Sorry, mate, but no. 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 It, Big Blue is a weapon, so there's no doubt about it. But the two of them have been against each other a few times, and the deer they always. What's the bitch like on the, on the deer? Are they good? Or about bad? 90%. Oh, well, then, then that, that's not a factor. <laughs> that rules Big Blue out. No. But Big Blue, I wouldn't take it away. Big, I love Big Blue. Big blue um, and I'm not a four man by any stretch, but I, I, Big Blue's a weapon. But the deer is just, she's, she's a step Definitely. above her, really. Like, it'll, be, it'll be a good crack, it'll be good to see. And I'll always love an old rattle at Alistair because it's yeah. just the, the sheer joy in the crack along with him. You know, nothing's took dead serious. And hopefully nobody embarrasses themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Now, gentlemen, you've, you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders now. We're, we're, we're holding up the good name of John Deere. Within the pair of years, like? Well, Challenge well, accepted, well, huh? Well, <laughs> Alwyn is back in the 8480, and we've got a new Holland T7270. It's not going to be a massive round of pulls, but it'll be interesting to see who is king of the hill. Um, so many variables between the weight, the horsepower, the power to weight, the gearbox, is it vario, is it power shift? The, the tires, the maneuverability, I mean, you couldn't call the class. You just couldn't call who's going to win that ahead of the game. Um, it will be meant. Uh, we'll be running in order, we'll, we'll be running from the lightest to the heaviest, just to save the track for as long as we can from getting too caught up. So it's all to play for at the very last there with the heavyweights. Uh, I'll be impressed you run 100 tractors through twice. Uh without doing another old one. <laughs> hey, Don't do smells. Turn up on the day and get hooked in and sure. Let her up. Foot down. I hope I didn't rattle through that too quickly for you. That is our 100 tractors. Class 2 is going to be fast and furious. Uh, I'd expect a lot of those tractors you think are doing about 120 or 130 horsepower to be well tuned up into the, the 150s. There'll be a few surprises, no doubt, in that pack. And at the end of the day, guys, there's a barrel section at the top where anything can happen. We've seen it before. Uh, we'll be doing our best this year, thanks to Red Rock, to not be flipping trailers. The action will not stop. So guys, get your tickets, get them bought now before the deadline on the 30th of April. It is your last chance to book a spectator tickets before we get stuck into the season and a heap of filming for Farmflex. 
before you know it, it's going to be the 5th of August. It's going to be monumental and it's going to be one of those days again where you're like, you'll hear in the grapevine if you weren't there how good it was and you'll be kicking yourself that you weren't there. And it's going to be phenomenal. Looking forward to seeing you there. You see, if I tell you tonight, then boys will be accusing me of cheating and giving you advantages and stuff like that. He'll, <laughs> he'll be away the bar of eight tonne of stone, that is really there. Good mate, there are loads of stains, man. <laughs> <laughs> Take a big shake.